All right, shalom, my Kim, shalom, and hey, yabba shemal shai, rock a thumb to my dear brothers out there, you little man of sisters, worshiping yabba shemal shai, in spirit and in truth. All right, let me know as always any te technical difficulties, anything you can't see or hear, and Lord willing, uh, I'm able to catch it. And um, also, I got the hot spot on the phone connected with my tablet, so if it get a little fuzzy. Excuse me, if you get a little fuzzy or the stream look a little fuzzy, that's because I'm on my phone and my tablet at the same time, you know, using the internet. But regardless, uh, you know, we, us brethren, know that it's all about hearing this thing. As it is written in Romans uh, 10 and 17, faith come by hearing. So, yeah, man. But with that being said, let's give all praises to the creator of the heavens and the earth, the God of the Bible, Yahweh, Ba'ashim, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashim, Harakakwadash. What you just heard was the Paleo Hebrew, and I said the Heavenly Father's name was uh, which is Yahweh. His son name is Yahweh Shai, and the Harakakwadash is the Holy Spirit that us brethren come in to teach. Okay, jump on to the apostles over there, at Great Millstone, because they have taught us the true understanding, and they've been laboring since the 80s and the 90s, and still to this day, they out there being uh, the, the examples Yahweh Shai wants them to be for us, brethren that's here today. All right. And hey, we finna go into the power of Romans, the eighth chapter. The power of Romans, the eighth chapter. And first off, I'm gonna have to say that you Negro, Latino, Native Americans, you indigenous, the people that were brought over here in slave ships, the people who got the land took from them, you make up the Israelites, the 12 tribes of Israel. We are the real Israelites. The people over there in our land today uh, the 1948ers is what we call them. They're not the real Israelites, but we are. And that's the reason why we we so, we so coincide so much with the scriptures. No matter what we're going through, we coincide with these scriptures. It's in our blood. This is our, the ways of our forefathers. All right? Um, so we're the Israelites. In Romans, the eighth chapter, this chapter right here is like the chapter of hope. That's what this chapter is. Or... Another way of putting it is, there's a light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah, I mean, uh, hey, brethren and sisters, hey man, we, you know, we all well understand we've been through a roller coaster of hell. But now, there's a light at the end of the tunnel. There's salvation for us, as the scriptures said. This, this is finna come to an halt. What we're going through now, slavery, working, out of order women, out of order children, out of order men. You know, not having our own sovereignty, not, ever, not even being in our own land. It's finna stop. And I honestly can't wait because this terrible slavery, like the scriptures say, oppression making for wise men mad. This terrible slavery don't leave you nothing but mad all day, angry all day, stressed out all day, and, you know, things like that. But y'all about Shemel Shah got things like Roman the eighth chapter to let us know, hey, there's a light at the end of the tunnel. Just wait. Bless all those who wait on, it, on, on the Lord, as it is written. Let's go to Romans 8 and 1. Romans chapter 8, verse 1, it says, There is therefore no condemnation to them which are in Yahweh Shai Hamashiach, who walk not after the spirit, oh, I'm sorry, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. So, first off, the reason why I say Yahweh Shai Hamashiach, because that's the real name of the Lord. We all know that Yahweh Shemel Shai has given us the real name. Prior to the truth, you was calling on Jesus Christ. You was calling on Jesus Christ. Or you was calling on whatever religion that your parents grew you up in. You thought Allah was the way to go. You know, you was calling on Muhammad or, you know, Muhammad or whatever. Or whatever you was into. You know, some of us was even in a moment, hey, it's hard to believe it, but some of us was even certain brethren, they they even try to they didn't even try to acknowledge the Heavenly Father. They had a sense of they had a sense of um just like an atheism on them. Or if it ain't atheism, they, they believe it's a God, but that's how far I go. I know somebody created this, but I'm living, I'm doing me and living me. Basically, they wasn't even acknowledging the Lord, but now Yahweh Shemel Shai has given us the names back 
So now when you call on the Heavenly Father, your prayers actually can make it to the heavens, man. It's not under another God, a God. So that off top is a sense of, look, brothers, we moving up. We ain't going down. We're going up. And it says there's no condemnation to these men who are in Yahweh Shai. If you live in that way, if you live in by the counsel of Yahweh Shai, there's no condemnation to you. Matter of fact, the Yahweh Shai is going to come and pick you up. You know? And he's going to pick you up in them chariots, according to 2 Thessalonians, the fourth chapter. Okay? It says, For the law of the spirit of life in Yahweh Shai have made me free from the law of sin and death. So when you come under Yahweh Shai, there's, there's two, I'll put it like this for you. There's two categories. It's the law which Moses gave to the Israelites. And then there was, it's the grace that comes by Yahweh Shai. Okay, so now that you come to Yahweh Shai, you're not under the category of, of being judged by keeping the law. Because we know that it's written, he that keepeth the law have to keep all of the law. He had to live therein, which... The flesh that we're in in the society that we're in makes it impossible to keep the law to keep it a hundred percent so then you in automatic of being under the law you're in the automatic condemnation because you're breaking it when you just get dressed we always explain when you get dressed you're putting on different fabrics you're breaking it so now that we're under Yahweh Shai we're not under the category of the law no more but we're under the grace of Yahweh Shai but what did Yahweh Shai himself say, you got to keep the commandments. He told that one man, he said, um, he, he, I forget the conversation, but you brethren know the parable where the one man, uh, he, he told the Lord, he do all of that. He do all of the law. He honor his mother. He honor his father, you know, and the things of the sort. And Yahweh Shai told him, well, hey, that's good. Go sell all you have and follow me. And the, and the man left out sorrowful because he had great riches. So in that little uh, moment of time with Yahweh Shai, it shows that Yahweh Shai pushed keeping the law, though, to the best of your ability. You're just not going to be judged under it. So Yahweh Shai coming doesn't cancel out the law. Himself was, remember, him, himself, he, himself kept the law to a perfection. So Yahweh Shai, being under Yahweh Shai, you keep the law to your best of your ability, and you know what you can keep and what you can keep and the lord knows what you can and can't keep so don't you don't want to play with that you don't want to play with that uh that area do it to the best of your ability and may yahweh shai have mercy on you it says verse three it says for what the law could not do and that it was weak through the flesh the heavenly father sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh so they knew the spirit of the heavenly father set it up because he knew that we wasn't going to be able to keep the law. Matter of fact, there's a scripture at second address. We'll go to it real quick. There's a scripture in second address where it talks about the malignity of the root. Do you know that the heavenly father, you know that the heavenly father left us to where we cannot keep the law perfect. That was a strategic move that the heavenly father did with the Israelites. This is his second address chapter. Um, um, uh, second address chapter three, verse 21. It says, for the first Adam bearing a wicked heart transgressed and was overcome. Talking about the time of uh, the Genesis. It says and he, he sinned and he was overcome. It says, and so be all they that are born of him. We all come from. That, that generations of Adams, Adam. Now, all of us sin too. It says, thus infirmity was made permanent. This, the infirmity, infirmity is an illness. Sin is an illness, okay? The infirmity or the sin was made permanent in us. It says, and the law also in the heart of the people with the malignant of the root. The law was made permanent in us because we were given a law that's why jake do things according to the law and they don't even understand why they do it like for instance circumcision some of you brethren was you were circumcised from your birth your parents didn't know that was in the scriptures they just did it 
the, the law is in our people, even though they don't fall it, but certain things by generations is just instilled in us. Well, just as the law is in there, the sin is in there. It says, so that the good departed away and the evil abode still. Now, jumping up to verse 20, it says, it says, and yet took us down not away from them a wicked heart that the law may bring forth fruit in them. So the heavenly father didn't take it away. You see, the heavenly father, Yahweh, did not take away the that, 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 that evil spirit that lieth within us so that we could keep the law perfect. He didn't do it like that. He left it there because he's making a point. The heavenly father's making a point. And a part of his point, a part of it, is that Yahweh Shai, everything is going to be weaned under the Lord Yahweh Shai. He will be the, the prime example that nobody, none of the Israelites, none of us, not me, not you, not none of the, the men that's walking the earth now, or none of us will be able to be an example like him. None of us will be able to have that perfection like he had. He's He had received the preeminence, like it tells you in Colossians. He's received the preeminence, meaning preeminence, meaning the ability to be above. He's been given the ability to be above all of us. So he was the one that came on the earth and the Lord took the malignant root out of him. He didn't have that root of sin in him when he was walking. So he was able to keep, uh, uh, you know what? I would say it like this. He came in sinful flesh. He came in a simple flesh, but the heavenly father I'm gonna take all of that kind of. I'm gonna I'm gonna reword that. So forgive me. He came in a sinful flesh, um, but the heavenly Father gave him the spirit to overcome all of that. I would say it like that. All right, because he did come in a sinful flesh. But a part of the, the point being that everything is gonna be weed under Yahweh Shai. He will be that example for us, a man who did not sin. Okay. It says. Um, so when he came, he showed that there is a sense of perfection. And now us brethren who are weak and still in the flesh, we're able to come under the Lord's son, Yahweh Shai, under his, under his covering. And then we're able to be free from the things we do because Yahweh Shai is covering them gray areas or that though he's covering those areas for us. Verse four says that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us. Who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit and the way you are under yahweh shai is if you're in the spirit of yahweh shai that's how you cover by him it says for they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh but they that are after the spirit the things of the spirit so whatever you into it shows who what you're about okay if you're indulging in the flesh you ain't about yahweh shai we know Yahweh Shai didn't indulge in the flesh. It was even a, a heavy point when the Lord was walking the earth. They were trying to make Yahweh Shai a king. And you know Yahweh Shai fled from them. But a, a, a man that's in the flesh, oh, he wants to be the king. You see how Jake fight over trying to be in leadership today? They fighting all over leadership and, you know, coming against the, their teachers. So, you know, being in the flesh, you're going to... You would have allowed them to make you a king. Well, the Lord Yahweh Shai ain't about the flesh. The flesh profiteth nothing as Yahweh Shai even spoke to us. So it says, for being carnally minded is death, but spiritually minded is life and peace. Yahweh Shai came in the spirit of his heavenly father. He said he came to do the father's business. So now us brethren, we're coming under the spirit of Yahweh Ba'ashim Yahweh Shai. The Heavenly Father and the Son, well, we got to be in the same fashion. You got to be in the Spirit. Sometimes the Spirit tells you, no, you can't indulge in that. You know? The Spirit will check you real quick. Nah, that you can't you can't go right there. You know? And that's what that's being in the Spirit. Sometimes the Spirit is warning you. Um, when you it's danger around the Spirit warning you to get out of there. But you have to be in the spirit. You got to be sober-minded, as the scriptures tell us. You got to be like, you know, one eye focused. You got to be focused, and you're able to pick up these spiritual things. But to be carnally minded, like the scripture said, 
it's, 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 it's death. Here it is. You, you'll be, say, for instance, um, the scriptures say, render not evil for evil. The scriptures say that. Somebody do something evil to you, all right? You knowing what the truth is, you know, like, damn, this dude didn't got over on me. I could go get a strap or something, and I could go handle this guy, take this in my own hands. But then you're not going to be justified by, by the Lord Yahweh Shai. You're not going to be justified because the scriptures say render not evil for evil. The scriptures say if, if you've been overcoming with a, you know, you've been buffeted for your faults or whatever, somebody did evil to you and you ain't you didn't really deserve it. Well, the scriptures say, talking about um, um, give a place onto your anger. Use a really you know you put a curse on a person you pray to the heavenly father about the person of course but if you take this strap and you render evil for evil now you now you ain't justified you you and you in jail for murder i don't know so so carly minded is death even though in your mind this person got over on you and you thinking to yourself well i could i'm gonna go get them back and every it would be even in your mind it's even but not in, the, not in the Lord's. Matter of fact, there's a scripture that tell you that. Um, um, let me see. I'm going to type in wait, wait on the Lord. It's in Proverbs. Let me see if I can find it. Here we go. Proverbs chapter 20, verse 22. Check this verse out. It says, say not thou, I will recompense evil, but wait on the Lord and he shall save thee. You see? You see that? So. The heavenly father he not he not dealing with the carnality of the mind maybe the heavenly father put you in your situation to test you maybe he caused that evil to fall upon you to test you see where your character is at you see but if you're in the spirit you're able to see these things all right it says back in romans 8 and um 7 it says because the current the carnal mind is enmity with the heavenly father when you're in your carnality of your mind at that point with the ways of the heavenly father and what he said to do it it's kind of you you kind of like it's called like blacking out you kind of like it goes to the back you don't even you you in your carnality of your mind you want to do what you want to do at that moment that second that's why it says the carnal mind is enmity against the most high you know it says for it is not subjected to the law of the most high neither indeed can be that's the reason why i just told you the carnality of the mind is enmity between the most high because it cannot be subjected to the law that's what i was just saying a couple seconds ago when you get to that moment and you and your carnality you're not even thinking about the ways of the lord no more you want what you want and you want it now especially if it's somebody that did evil against you you know or if, if you don't if you're in the carnality of your mind and you you see a very attractive woman and she wants to lay with you, but she has a man. You all you thinking about is you want to receive that, you want to receive release your seed with that woman. You know, and it's nothing. There's nothing else that you rather would have. That's when you're in carnality of your mind. You like fuck that. I'm gonna do it, or forget that. Excuse my language. You know, I'm gonna do it. Okay, so. That's why Yahweh Shai said this. Let's go right here real quick to um, John. John, the sixth chapter. John 6, chapter 33. It says, um, no, 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 no. John 6 is 63. John 6, verse 63. It said, it is the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. The spirit is the is quickens you. It makes you better. Being in the spirit makes you better. That's what quickening means. You know, loosely translating it or loosely giving it a de definition. It means to be made better. Period. Being made it better. That's what the spirit does to you. You make better choices. You do better things. You make better moves. Better decisions. But the flesh profiteth nothing. That's why it's enmity with the Most High. It doesn't. It doesn't care about the laws of the Most High. That's what the. It doesn't care. It only wants its pleasures, its desires. Okay, its wants. That's all it wants. Okay, that's why. 
it says in Romans the eighth chapter that um that that the the that a carnal mind is enmity with the most high, and then it told you why it cannot be subjected to the law. So now us brethren, hey, we've been given the privilege to understand that you don't you can't be in the flesh. Jake don't even know that. Jake is walking around right now and not understanding that you can't just have what you want. You see? That is right there is, is a blessing from Yahweh Shemel Shai. Because this devil, the Edomites, the separate claim white man, because you are the devil, you've told our people through your social media, through your media platforms that you've been controlling since the 1940s. You've told our people that you only live once, do whatever you want, and don't worry about the consequences. So Jake is running around the earth thinking to themselves that, hey, it's what I want to do. It's my life. I can do what I want to do. It's my yeah. Look, the Lord ain't dealing with that. That's a carnal mind. And it's not subjected to the laws of the Most High. The Most High ain't dealing with it. So now us, brethren, we have the privilege to see the secret. Oh, you can't get whatever you want. You got to be in the spirit. It tells you, uh, it goes on further to speak. It says, because... It says, so then, they that are in the flesh cannot please the Most High. So if you're in the flesh, hold up off top. If you're in the flesh, you are no longer under faith. Because the scriptures tell you in Hebrews that it's impossible to please the Heavenly Father without faith. So if it just tell you in, he if it tell you in Hebrews 11, chapter, verse 6, it's impossible to please the Heavenly Father without faith. And then we read it here in Romans 8 and 8. It says, so then they that are of the flesh cannot please the most high. If you're in the flesh, you automatically have no faith. So when, when the prophets are out there, us brethren are out there and we're teaching the word and we're deciphering spirits, you know, the way that you conduct yourself and how you talk and look shows us every uh, shows shows us a great portion if you in the spirit or you in the flesh. If you come up, you have zero beard. Most likely you indulging in the flesh. Okay? All right? And, and, and the list goes on. I could give more lit things on the list, but it, it just because you will cut your beard because you're doing it for the ladies. You know what I'm saying? And Jake trying to come with the, the lame excuse of job and work, but that, that's been canceled. The beard, the Lord, I remember the apostles of Great Millstone teaching that. It's going to come a time where the beard is going to come back in. I remember that was, you know, going way, you know, a little bit further back when when it first came on YouTube and things like that. And um, sure enough, it came into fashion just as the spirit of the Lord jumped on the apostles to speak. And then all the, the celebrities and everything start wearing beards and Jake start wearing their beards. And then the jobs start to excuse beards being worn. They even excusing tattoos. There's people in there with, I'm talking about people that work in common places with all type of tattoos over them. So if a, if a job ain't talking about you gotta shave your beard and things like that, it's like shit, you gonna have to, me personally, I'm moving to the next job, okay? All right, somebody tell them the little thing. Somebody, I just got to go somewhere else, man. Because at the end of the day, these this life, this way is temporal, as it says in Second Edges, anyway. So, to be in the flesh, you can't please the Heavenly Father straight up. It don't work like that. You see. So now it leads us, brethren, to hey, you got to have temperance, bro. And then temperance leads to discipline. You know. So this is the this is the, you know we it's going to start getting more juicy and more you know lightening up on. The goodness as we go down but this 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 is good for us brothers this is good this discipline is good for you man it says verse 9 says but you are not of the flesh but in the spirit it shall be that the spirit of the heavenly father dwelleth in you now if any man have not the spirit of Yahweh shy he is none of his and if Yahweh shy be in you the body is dead because of sin but the spirit is life because of righteousness it says but if the spirit of him that raised up Yahweh Shai, who rose up Yahweh Shai? The heavenly father Yahweh. It says, but the spirit of him that raised up Yahweh Shai from the dead, dwelling you, 
He that raised up Yahweh Shai from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Just as Yahweh Shai, when he rose up from the dead, he was in his, he had it. He had it. He it was he was he he had the victory. He was made better. He was complete with the Heavenly Father. You know what I mean? Well, just as Yahweh Shai got rose up into his perfection, us brethren, we finna get rose up to our perfections, man. Just as Yahweh Shai quickened Yahweh, um, I'm sorry, just as Yahweh quickened Yahweh Shai, the Heavenly Father finna quicken us too, man. And I can't wait for when we perfect it, man. No sin, period. No more crappy thoughts, no more body ailments, no more, none, nothing negative, no more. Perfection physically, perfection mentally, no more envy, no more stripes. All right? No more uh having to weigh out a false balance all the little how people weigh balances in the earth between situations it's off all the balances is going to be put exact everything going to be corrected again and that's when the lord going to quicken us it says therefore brethren we are debtors not of the flesh to live after the flesh for ye live for if ye live after the flesh you shall die but if you through the spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, you shall live. So now we're 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 not in debtors to the flesh no more. The flesh ain't got control over us like it once had. You know, because now we're in the spirit of Yahweh Shai, man. Okay. It says, um, it said we mortify the deeds of the body. Meaning that, hey, all of us, brethren, this through the grace and power of Yahweh Shai, we stood up to your fucking to your sin i'm sorry you know i get it a little in my spirit we stood up to the sin like man i'm cool man i'm cool i ain't like i ain't finna be you know i can't do this no more you know what i'm saying it separated our friends from us the, the friends that we had in the world a lot they don't deal with us no more man you know man and that and that's just how it goes but it's fine because what did yahweh shai say when his mother his sister and brother in there, everything came up desiring to talk with him. What did he tell? What did he tell the man? He told him, uh, you see these, he stretched forth his hands to his disciples. He said, this is my mother and my brethren. Them that do the will of my father. This is our real family. This is the real family. And we're going to understand that you brethren around the world, all of us, we're going to understand the depths of how we really, if we're elect, we're going to understand the true depths on how we really uh was family from the from from the beginning a true family that went further back even though right now we're not um you know we don't we ain't grow up with each other we ain't necessarily had the same aunties and we we spread everywhere all different type of lives but really in spirit we're really a family that goes all the way back to the beginning that been with each other man been with each other a true family see so let's read on further it says um so as we 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 sat down we stood up to the sin man regardless of everybody else coming against us through the grace and power y'all about Shemel Shai, we stood up to the fucking sin okay and i'm i'm, I'm throwing them so-called curse words out here today brothers forgive me it says uh it says for as many as are led of the spirit of Yahweh Shemuel Shai, they are the sons of the Most High. You see? You in the spirit, you really could call yourself Yahshua Allah. What does Yahshua Allah mean? He is a prince with Yahweh, the Heavenly Father. He's a prince with God. Now we could call ourselves a true son. A true, we could call ourselves by Yahshua Allah and it, and it really sticks. Unlike it's a lot of Jakes out there, they 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 not they call themselves Yahshua Allah, but they doing everything opposite of what the scriptures say. You're not really like the scriptures say, all they of that that say they of Israel is not of Israel. That's how you could just simply put it. And I see all your brother and scriptures on the board as well, man. The water to your brother and man. Keep 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 edifying the board. I'm I'm kind of locked in on the spirit today because it's a long chapter. I don't want to be here a <laughs> century and a half. But hey, I see you brother and uh precepts keep slapping them up there brothers beautiful precepts it says um 
verse 15 says, For we have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father. So that verse just told us what we undergone, what coming into the truth, taking on the, the so-called burden of the truth, taking it on. It don't lead us to a spirit of bondage of fear. Like being under Esau society, you got to be careful in everything you do. You got to be careful when you cross the street because you'll get a jaywalking ticket, man. Now you got to pay the jaywalking ticket. You didn't got the money for that. That's bondage. You got to be so careful in this society with just everything. But when you come to the spirit of Yabba Shemel Shai, like the scriptures say, the truth should set you free. You start seeing the truth of the matters of everything. You see everything correctly how it's supposed to be done. And that doesn't create, generate fear. You know, that, as, as far as that oppressive fear, of course, there's a there's a thing called healthy fear, fear of Yahweh, the creator, Yahweh Shemel Shai, of course, that's a healthy fear. But I'm talking about that fear like Esau is pushing on us. That's The spirit doesn't do that to you. All right. <clears throat> so we receive, we receive the spirit again. It's not to this that bondage of fear, but to the adoption, being able to call ourselves a son again. And now we cry, Abba, Father, and not, and not, and not, and not, um, you know, I, I, I'm not even lying to you. I remember, I, I recalled one, like, you know, in my journey, one time I was going through something, I was saying, Abba, I was, you know, crying to the Father at the moment, I was like, Abba, Abba, and then it dawned on me, hold up real quick, the scriptures say that you would do that, you know, and that, and that's, it, it blew my mind, because the scriptures are taking hold. On the elect men, they're taking hold with the prophecies. They're doing what they say. And I know you, brethren, could testify to that. You're going through something, crying to the Most High. you saying, Abba, Abba. Whoa, 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 whoa. You know what I mean? But the prophecy said, now you could be adopted son, adoptions of son, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Abba is the Hebrew word. Abba is the Hebrew word for father. Now we're crying, Father father praying to the heavenly father crying to him right it says um it says the spirit itself bear witness with our spirit that we are the children of the most high so now that you in the spirit the only way you can see that we're the people of the most high you have to be in the spirit you see the spirit it's like the spirit comes with a with, with a, a lot of unlocking like you, you get you, you in the spirit. There's a you get a key. Like it's like doing doing levels. Like the apostles be saying it's levels to this thing. You, you beat level one. You beat level two. And you at, at the end of each level, you get something, some type of spiritual reward. You know what I'm saying? And one of those spiritual rewards of just being in the spirit, you are able to see that who your people are. And and that's a blessing. Like when I'm over here, over because I'm over here in California. Over here in California, but like this, California particularly, but the West Coast, when you peep the, uh, the the majority of the tribes that's over here, you have Issachar, you have Zebulon, okay? You have Gad, Reuben, you know? You got, Of course, you got the, all tribes here, of course. But I'm talking about like when you're going into these cities and you're going to these different um, places, you see in predominantly these people over on this side a lot of them all right but don't get me twisted there's all type of tribes here you got judah over here you got judah you see judah too you got you all that over here but that's what you see now dealing with the tribe of zebulon and the tribe of issachar our own people that don't know the truth they can't tell the difference they can't tell the difference between the two they just all label them as issachar Fuck it, they all they say mess it they all mexicans but no when you when you were around the tribe of Zebulon and Issachar, you could see the difference. You could see the difference between the two, even though they're 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 very similar. All right, it's almost as if Zebulon, they their, their attitude on how their demeanor is more lean on Southern Kingdom. Like you would meet a Zebulonite, and he 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 remind you of Southern Kingdom like a mug. But then you you know Issachar, they, they keep it more, you know, to the to the tribe with how they deal. It's, it's kind of like you can see the difference. Even on how they look, you can see the difference, you know? But it comes with, it goes all the way back to, like the scripture just said, 
um, the spirit bear witness with us that we are the children of Yah Bashamel Shai, man. Which the tribe of Issachar is the Mexicans and the tribe of Zebulon are the, uh, the, the Central Americans. I should have had said that first. You see? Um, um, yeah, like, like I'm thinking of it right now. Like a lot of these, these, because you know over here in Los Angeles, they deal with the gang banging and all that stuff. Do you know a lot of those gang bangers are straight up Gad and Ruben? A lot of them. You know, we know Issachar, the Northern Kingdom is in there. Issachar Zebulon is in there. But a lot of them, them, them dudes, they doing a crip walk that was um, amongst the tribe of Gad that was uh, called, uh, damn, why is it running from me? Um, praise dancing, you know? That's what it looked like. That little crip walk looked just like it. It's the same, actually. A lot of them, a lot of them, they're warring with each other just like the tribes before Esau got here, they were doing the same thing. Running up on each other, tribes, creating cliques. You know what I'm saying? And they be thinking that they be they be thinking that they're the southern kingdom. A lot of them be thinking they southern kingdom. But then you you get to meeting them and talking to them, you see how how quick of a like uh they they're quickly to retaliate. Like that warrior type mentality, because remember the, the half tribe of Manasseh, Gad, and Reuben, uh, they fought for Israel and they was on the other side of Jordan. You know? So they have that that quick, like man, Gad got that quick and ah quick on you, man. To to to, to get to get into warrior state. You know, it's just something I picked up, you know, you brother and that's around, you know. You know, you can, of course, you can add where I don't see, you know, all that. But nonetheless, just going back to the verse, the spirit bears witness with us. When you're in the spirit, you're able to see these things. Lord, you the key, you're able to unlock certain things. You go to the next level, you're unlocking that mystery. It says, and if children, then heirs, heirs of Yahweh, and joint heirs of Yahweh Shai, if so be we suffer with him, that we, we may be also glorified together. So, we gonna, we gonna make it with you, Howard Shai, Lord willing. It says, for I reckon that the suffering of the present times are not worthy to be compared with the glory which should be revealed in us, okay? So, hey, like like going back to my intro of this lesson, there is hope, man. There's a light at the end of the tunnel. The verse just told us what you're going through right now, it can't even be compared to what the glory you're gonna get. And, and come on, brothers, we going through it right now. I know I'm going through it, I know you're going through it. And there's brethren that's going through it worse than me. You know? This brother I'm going through all type of stuff. But the Lord said, what you're going through is ain't going to be able to be compared to what the, the, the glory I should give you. So basically the Lord, is, he's like, look, I got you, son. In other words, he's trying to, he's trying to motivate you to, to be cheerful about it, about what's, what the deal is. It says, for the earnest expectation of the creature waited for the manifestation of the sons of the heavenly father. So all the creation, brethren, whoever these elect are, and we have a good chance. You see what's going on with these other camps? We have a good chance. All right? So all the creation, all the creation is waiting for the Lord to lift up the sons of the, the, the elect, whoever these men are. All right? All the creation is said, birds, things that, the trees, they're all waiting, man. Man, brethren, it's going to be some hell of glory being passed around when the Lord Yahweh Shai come back. We just got to stick into this thing. It says, for the create, it says, for the creature was made subjected to vanity, not willingly, but by reason, by, by reason of him who have subjected the same in hope. So we was talking about it a little earlier, how the heavenly father left the malignant root in us. All right, he left it to where we can't be perfect. So we were subjected to vanity, but it was a reason. It just told you the reason. So that it said, not willingly, but by reason. This is the reason of him who has subjected the same in hope. The fact that he made it to where we can't go off, created, created, opportunity to us for us to have hope that it could get better that's what the lord did and he gave the lord his son yahweh shy 
he gave us Yahweh Shai to create this hope. And the Heavenly Father is plan is working out. Yahweh Shai is getting his glory. My sons is getting their glory. It's all playing out. It says, because the creature itself also should be delivered from the bondage of corruption into a glorious liberty of the children of the Most High. The plan is to get these men, clean them up. You know, let's go a little further back. The plan was to send their son, Yahweh Shai. Yahweh Shai came, did his thing. We're in the future of the last days. The plan is to clean up the men of the Lord, clean them up, all right? Move them into their glory. Using the same guy, Yahweh Shai, that, that, that made it happen for us. The plan worked out smooth. Yahweh Shai getting his glory. The Heavenly Father, first off, the Heavenly Father, Yahweh was getting his glory. The, yeah, his son, Yahweh Shai, is getting his glory. And those who follow Yahweh Shai is getting the glory. The elect, starting with the elect. It's an awesome plan to me. It says, for we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. So everybody, everything is, you see everything is out of whack. The earth is crying. The earth itself is crying. Just like the uh, uh, the elder brother Barak be saying, the earth is a living organism. It is living. The earth bring forth life. You know, since it's been created, it's been bringing forth life. So the earth is mourning. Everything on the earth is mourning. Okay? The people are mourning. The animals are mourning. You got the zoos. No, that, that, that ain't a zoo. That's a prison for animals. That's what that is. You know? Everybody's mourning. All right? It says, it says, not only they, but ourselves also. And more importantly, the elect is mourning. Because we can see the injustices and we're able to identify it. We ain't like, um, um, black unconscious community you know ran by sonetta where they're trying to create community they're trying to create of uh, uh uh workmanship with each other and build in a place where it's full of blood and rape robbery and murder we ain't doing that we're crying to the heavenly father to stop this man to get it to break up its foundation America's foundation is built on, 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 rape, rob, murder, murder. No lies, no truth for the Heavenly Father. It's just built on that. This place got to be, be taken up from the roots. And the Lord's gonna do that when He calls World War Three and nuclear destruction to happen. This place is gonna be burnt to its to its foundation. The works, the scriptures say, the place in the works thereof should be burnt up. The works, how could you burn a work? Somebody's work, that's an action. How could you burn an action? No, that's that's telling you that those actions are going to stop. Ain't going to be no more of those actions in the earth. That's why it says the works are going to be burned up too. That way it's going to be finished. Esau's paying attention to the back. They're getting an earful. You know, it says, um, um, but this lesson is for the elect. It ain't for them. It's for the elect. Okay? Lord willing, I'm a part of the elect. It says, going back, it says, um, it says, um, verse 23, it says, not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the spirit. Even we ourselves grown within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit, which to wit means to know, to wit the redemption of our body to know when we when this gonna happen lord when are you gonna do this that's what we saying right it said for we are saved by hope we are saved by our hope we saved by hope but hope that is seen is not hope for what a man see why doth he yet hope for we're saved by this hope brothers all we got is hope i'm sitting here doing this lesson in hope that hey am i edifying a course Hey, Lord, are you happy with what I'm doing? Lord, is this good enough for me to be saved? We are all in hope. Each of us, brethren, we're in freaking hope, man. That's it. And hope is the expectation of something. You know what I mean? We're in, and, and another word for hope is faith. We're in faith. You know, we're in faith that the Lord is going to be with us when Esau run in because we've made ourselves top on the list of government opposition. 
we in hope that when when there is there, there isn't no food that the Lord gonna feed us and give us water. We're in hope that the Lord gonna lift us up, give us spiritual power against this technology that this Edomite is gonna come with to take over the world and his grand plan of the new world order. We living in hope. We live by hope. It's all that's why the scripture said earlier, the just should live by faith. That's all we living by. That's all we have at the end of the day, man. You know what I'm saying? It says, um, you know, we don't have a million dollars. We ain't got all this money. We ain't got the biggest houses. We ain't got, you know what I'm saying? Some of our women, they 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 treat us like crap here this day. The other day they do better. You know what I'm saying? All right. Sometimes we can't bait, we can't purchase something that we wanted. But at the end of the day, we, we don't care about none of that. We got this hope. That's what we got. We got this hope. And y'all about Shemel Shai. And when the scriptures say, seek ye the kingdom of heaven first, and all these things should be added unto you. So I'm rocking with that. You know, and I pray to y'all about Shemel Shai that all of us is rocking with that. Okay? It says, verse 25, it says, but if hope, it says, but if we hope, for that we see not then we do what patience wait for we're waiting it says likewise the spirit also helpeth our infirmities this part is very important it says likewise the spirit also helpeth our infirmities for we know not what we should pray for as we ought but the spirit itself make intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered okay it says so that's very important because hey sometimes this flesh sometimes it's flesh you know there's a scripture i would say uh, uh, there's a scripture that tells you that this flesh presses down on our thoughts you know we're not able to really express ourselves on how we feel when it comes to dealing asking the lord for things asking the lord to be there you know acquiring at the lord this flesh presses us down so what happens is the spirit of the spirit helps us the spirit helps us with our prayers you know the angels are aiding with your prayer so when they go up to the heavenly father they they basically added some spice onto it so to speak to, so that so that it could be fitting for the lord to help us man uh let me see if i can find that verse real quick um yeah wisdom of solomon chapter 9 verse 15 it says for the corruptible body presseth down the soul in the earthly tabernacle web down the mind that music upon many things you know so it's these bodies that we in that makes it even harder of a challenge some days that some days you know you're supposed to pray but you don't it's like this the flesh stops you you know we got a little uh that's like one of the little bots if one of my moderators could smash him. I don't know if I got any moderators on the board, but go ahead and smash that uh, that little bot or whatever that is. But um, the spirit helps us, man. These bodies press our thoughts down. They 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 try to make you lazy. They try to make you nah. You ain't gonna study. No, nah, don't get to that lesson. They do that, but the spirit step in like nah. You gotta do that because. Hey, you know you love y'all by Shemel Shai. And when you're in the spirit, a lot of times you're able to beat the flesh. Sometimes you give in. Sometimes you are lazy. You, next thing you know, like, damn, you know what? I'm going to have to get to it tomorrow. But, hey, that's why we're in a grace period. That's why we are, you know, that you know we are being perfected. We ain't perfect, perfect yet. You know what I mean? So, um, I don't think I got no moderators on the board. Um... I'm, I'm, uh, let me smash this guy real quick. Yeah, let me smash this guy real quick. All right, let's get back now. <clears throat> let's get back now. It says now, it says, And he that searcheth the heart knoweth what is in the mind of the spirit, 
because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of the Most High. And Yahweh Shemel Shai knows what's in your mind. He knows, brothers. You brothers and you sisters out there, he knows. He knows what you're going through. He knows what you're doing in your life. He knows all of it. Of course we know that. That's very basic to, to understand, you know? And when we praying and we ain't, we ain't able to really put forth that fourth, that energy, we really want to tell the Lord that the spirit is helping when it goes up. He's going up, you know? And that's it. Man, come on, brothers. Come on, yo. Jake is out here praying to fucking, ah, oh, man. Jake is out here, excuse me. Jake is out here praying to God and Jesus Christ. Going in the same circle all the day long. They're ending up in the same problems all the damn, all year long. Like, dude, you made that problem earlier this year. They're calling on God and Jesus Christ. They're not living their life right. They're in the flesh. Brethren, we're not like that. The Lord has had grace on us. We have a, we're doing better. He's given us an opportunity to do better, and we're doing it. That's a that's hell of a blessing, man. Yeah, the, like the brother just said, Baraka. Uh come to find out our moans and groans, our prayers too. Con. It sure is. The scriptures say that just shall complain continually. So, man, you know. Now let's 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 jump in. It says, it says, and we all it says, and we know that all things work together for the good of them that love Yahweh Ba Shemel Shai, to them who are called according to his purpose. It says, for whom he did foreknew, he also predestinated to conform him to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. So man, we've been handpicked, Lord willing. You can ask for nothing more greater. It says, moreover, whom he did predestinate, then he also called, and whom he did call, he then he also justified, and whom he did justify, then he also glorified. What should we say then? What shall we then say to these things? If the Heavenly Father be for us, who could be against us? And that's why we still to this day doing these lessons in the front of the world, even though the world hate that we bring certain of these points out. But the Lord is with us, that's why. That's why they can't do nothing. Because the Lord wants something to be heard in the earth. And he uses his prophets to bring forth his message. It says, he that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Yahweh Shai came and he did his thing. And now Yahweh Shai is hooking us up. It says, who shall lay anything to the charge of the heavenly father that elect? It is the heavenly father that justifieth. Who is he that condemneth? It is the is Yahweh Shai that died? Yea, rather, that is risen again. Who is even at the right hand of the Most High who maketh intercession for us? So here it is. Nobody can't. If you in the spirit, you're doing everything correct. The Lord is with you. Nobody can't put no charge on you. Nothing, man. You know? It's the Lord that's with us, man. You can't lay nothing to our charge. You can't say nothing. It's the Lord that justified us. And Yahweh Shai for to come get us. You know? It says, and, and, and Yahweh Shai is on the right hand of the Heavenly Father. You best believe Yahweh Shai is speaking on your behalf too. The angels, the spirit, the angel that's with you to Yahweh Shai, they're speaking on your behalf to the Heavenly Father. It says, who shall separate us from the love of Yahweh Shai? Shall tribulation or distress? <laughs> or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or the sword as it is written for thy sake we are killed all the day long we are accounted as sheep to the slaughter nay in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us for i am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor height nor debt nor any creature nor shall be able to separate us from the love of Yahweh, which is in Yahweh Shah Hamashiach, our Lord, man. So being in the spirit, doing this thing correctly, you can't be separated. No, no, no height, no debt, no angel, no powers. You know? None of that. And we have the attitude is man, we die all the day long, like the scripture just said. You've been putting the prophets to death since the prophets been here. Jake been doing it. Esau been doing it. 
The other nations been doing it. Y'all been persecuting Jeremiah. You didn't persecute it. All the, the prophets. You didn't you didn't ultimately you touched Yahweh shine, man. We kind of like 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 sheep to the slaughter. But this time, this last time, Yahweh Shema Shai ain't gonna allow you people to just have your way with his men, with his servants. But the Lord gonna judge y'all and save us if we be the elect. So this time, nothing gonna separate us. You could do all what you want. You've been doing it to us. Especially Esau Edom. When he tried to come in with his um genetically modified soldiers, satanic Satan worshiping demon immersed human beings. When they when he tried to come with all of that, man, fuck it, man. We've been dealing with all these things, and you people persecuting us for standing up for what's righteous, man. You know? So that was the whole chapter right there, Akim. Through the spirit of power, Yahweh Shema Shah, I went to get it under an hour. And I think the Lord allowed me to do that. So, man, I pretty much tagged everything. I hope you brother and you sisters was edified out there, man. Keep doing what you do best. I hope that that chapter was, you know, uplifting to you, man. Un on understanding things that just keep going. Keep that drive going of Yahweh Shema Shah, man. And keep doing that, which is good. Okay? So, yeah, man, pretty much I'm going to close it out, man. Let's give all praises to Yahweh Shema Shah. In the Shemai prayer, I'm going to say Shema Yasha Allah, Yahweh Allah Hainawa, Yahweh Kud. What you just heard was the Paleo Hebrew of saying the Shemai prayer, which is found in Numbers, the sixth chapter. And what I said was, uh, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our power is one. The Lord Yahweh is one. And like I like to say, He's living and breathing right now. <laughs> he's living and breathing like I am, and He's making things happen on His time. Hey, Yahweh Shemai Shai, Brakatam Tiyakim, Shalom, step.